Hello and uh, welcome to my Multisim 7 segment display tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is looking at a, a circuit that we're going to build in class. And the purpose of that circuit is to drive this 7 segment display here. And I've got it set up in a simulation so we can see it actually working. We're going to use a 555 timer and that's going to create the clock pulse. It's going to drive a 74LS93 counter and the counter is going to drive a BCD decoder, a 74LS47N. Uh, that's going to be the, the chip that switches its outputs on and off in accordance with the count given by the 93. And as each output switches off, the corresponding segment in the seven segment display is going to switch on because this is a common anode seven segment display. A couple of things to note. One is this digital ground, if you're going to use multisim to do it, that must be in the circuit in order for it to work. You need to um, tie pins 3, 5 and 4 from the 74LS47N to VCC. And I've got my one set up with an AND gate um, so that it actually resets after 9 counts. Otherwise it would count through the whole 15, 16 counts. Uh, and my one takes QB and QD which is um, when it gets to 10, ands them together and sends them to the reset here, 2 and 3. In Multisim, this will all work fine without grounding or tying the reset pins down to ground. But in practice, when you build this circuit, you're going to need to tie um, RO1 and RO2 down to ground. Otherwise, those pins will float. And it's when you take these pins high a TTL high that the counter resets. So if they float, if the voltages on them float, the counter just won't count. So those are a few things you need to know. I've also got it set up with a logic analyzer here, and that shows the outputs QA, QB, QC, QD, and you can see what they look like as the voltages switch on and off. And we can also look at the clock pulse itself. And we see that the, the counter doubles for each output. So we've got a clock pulse input that's tied back to input B and you'll see that the duration of QA is twice as long as a clock pulse, then QB is twice as long as QA, QC, so on and so forth. You can see that as you, on, on the analyzer here. And we'll just run that very quickly. And you can see the, the display counting, resetting, and this would form the basis of, of uh, one of the first type of digital clocks. It's, it's got a few different uses, but it's a good circuit to, to get to know and, and to use, and it's lots of good practice. We just stop the uh, simulation. For those of you that have not used Multisim before, you, you can build this very quickly. The logic all comes from the TTL74LS, which is here and you just scroll down and find the various components. The 555 timer comes from the mix tab there. Seven segment display uh, there, yep. We get our power from up here, power and ground, VCC and ground, and also the digital ground is there as well. And resistors, I've used a resistor bank here. It's much easier to use a bank and you get the bank bottom left there. And I've used this one. You can change the, the value. Um, you'll need, I've set mine to 470 ohms. Depending on the brightness you require, you could, uh, you could either go a little higher than that or perhaps a little lower. The logic analyzer is taken from there. And I choose to use, to look, to view the logic analyzer output using the view grapher. So I'm looking at that through the graph at the moment. Only another couple of things to look out for, really. Multisim doesn't show power and ground for the TTL chips. It shows it for the 555 timer, but for the chips themselves, there is no power and ground. So when you go to build this one practically, you're going to need to know where the power and ground are. Two ways of doing that. You can look at a data sheet very quick, or you can double click on the component itself and it tells you the various, what the various pins do there. 
So we can see, for example, on this one, pin 10 is ground. That's on the 74 LS93. Okay, that's all for now.